All right, so the last panel, Ben, I don't know if you can throw up, it's only a one slide thing, it doesn't really matter. This is uh, really just to squeak out all our CME. And it's not really a panel, it's a quick discussion, and we're, then we're gonna get you out of here. It's something I like to call super pearls. And so every faculty member here, surprise, you have to think of one tidbit piece of advice that you want the participants to go home with. And the challenge is, I get to start, and you can't repeat what someone else has said. And I may get to say more than one thing, too, because I'm the course director, and I get to make the rules. And so if you want to change the rules, you just come up and talk to me and slip me a 20. Uh, so I, I also have this vision, and, it, and I've done this panel probably the last four or five years, I think, at the end of the day. And I have this hope one day of putting all these super pearls together, these little sound bites, and condensing it. And I bet that alone would be a super cool, like 30 minute talk. So, the super pearl that I haven't ever talked about is the micro debreeder. And I want you to start thinking of the micro debreeder as a two sided instrument a good side, safe side, and a bad side, the danger side. And I, I bring this up because watching dozens and dozens of hundreds, nah, dozens of residents, fellows, participants at these courses, hundreds of participants of courses, and seeing so many people use the micro debreeder in a top to bottom fashion instead of a side to side fashion. You're always protecting something with the safe side. You're always eating something with the danger side. Allowing yourself to think about a safe side, let's say you're taking out the bola. A lot of people, I was taught, straight up and down, let everything get sucked in, but it cuts into the middle turbinate, cuts into the bola, so you turn it so the safe side, the, the non-debreeder side is pushing into that middle turbinate, you're gonna create more space. It's like an elevator, it's like a retractor, and now you have more space to take out the micro debreeder, I, or take out the bola. I never have, hardly ever, have the micro debreeder in a straight up and down fashion. It's always side to side. That's my little super pearl. Uh, and then we're gonna go from front to back. So you better be thinking quick, because here it comes. Uh, we're just gonna do one, because I don't want people to over talk each other. Thank you though, Ben. Ben, you've done an amazing job today. And yeah. Dr. Preek. Because you did such a fantastic panel, you're next, and then we'll just pass it on. I, I think the super pearl for me is, uh, as I, I mentioned earlier, was the CFTR modulators for cystic fibrosis are a game changer. I think anecdotally, we're seeing such a reduction in, in doing sinus surgery in children, and I, I hope it uh, really translates to really great health for our CF population. So if you have kids with CF in your, in your practice, make sure you refer them to specialists who have the ability to give it to them. It's expensive, though. It's about 300 grand a year. For that, uh, for that therapy. So this is a tricafta, and I tell you, I my I was doing cystic fibrosis cases two, three a month, maybe at the UW. Big menial maxillectomies, and I rarely do it now. And not because I'm in private practice; it's just because those kids, those adults now, are doing fantastic. Eric. I have one that I, I repeat, and that is think septum, do septum, and we've talked about it a lot, so I'll come up with another one, because I just think from an access standpoint, from a mobility standpoint, for something that helps you achieve um, space inside the nose and your ability to instrument is good. The other one is the right shape. If you are doing sinus surgery right, you can visualize the anatomy of the cranial base and the orbits, and that gives every sinus a correct shape. And so for the ethmoid, posterior ethmoid complex, there's a box with a tail, and the same could be said about a sphenoid if you want to maximally aerate it. The frontal sinus is the shape of a half horseshoe if you're doing that right. That there's a shape when you maximally aerate the sinuses to the extent that you can and not hurt the turbinates, the brain, and the orbit. Um. That's a hard question. What's a super pearl? I'd say angle scopes. I, I mean, if you if you are not comfortable using a 30, 45, and 70 degree scope for cavities that are lateral from the septum, become comfortable with an angled scope, especially a 30 degree scope, um, not only in the office and the OR, but when you're done with your case, stop, take out the angle scope at the end of your case, and use an angled scope, 30, 70, to just look around at the end of the surgery. 
Can I give one more super borough? I was going to ask you okay. because so I asked several ARS senior people, American Rhinological Society's senior people. You may have two more okay. for changes the rules, unless it's the same one I'll that I'm taking. I just have one more super borough. And I asked Winston to talk about it was called the instrument challenge. What's your favorite instrument? So if you would comment on your answer for that too. My favorite I think. instrument. The, well, do you remember the instrument that you said? I probably said an adult 90 degree forceps for my brain. Yeah. So my favorite instrument is my brain because you can use that before surgery, during surgery, and it never breaks, hopefully. Um, and, and it's really cheap. But uh, my last super pearl is um, enjoy sinus surgery. So many of us get so anxious about it. I'm, I'm sorry I gave that medical legal talk because I know it tightened up a lot of sphincters. Um, but sinus surgery is one of those things that you can really start off somebody with a lot of symptoms, a lot of screwed up anatomy, do a beautiful surgery, change their life dramatically, make them so much better, um, and really impact them. And what we're doing in endoscopic sinus surgery has really changed millions and millions of lives every single year across the world. And it's a fantastic procedure. You know, Dr. Stamberger isn't with us anymore. A super pearl is to be a wonderful sinus surgeon. Enjoy it. Don't get stressed out about it and just do what we keep on doing. Uh, my super pearl is actually uh, what we talked about earlier from Karina's talk. So the medial inferior orbital floor, identify it early and then use that to keep yourself safe. So you use that level to always keep yourself safe. So if you're ever lost or it's bleeding, you don't know where you are, go back to that medial inferior orbital floor and you identify it. As soon as you identify that natural os of the maxillary sinus, as soon as you identify that, you just also identified the medial inferior orbital floor. So you already have that right away as soon as you do the unsynectomy. And so once you have that, the rest of your surgery is going to go great because you're going to you're going to know how to keep yourself safe at that level. So I have have two and they're connected. Um, so one is to say that you know you're never going to get a better view than when you're in the OR, right? So if your view in the OR is a challenge, especially with whatever you're going to be using to view something in clinic, then you've got to make it better because now you have an awake patient. You need to do a good debridement or whatever it is that you need to do in clinic. And if you can't do that and you can't do it easily in the OR, then you're not going to be able to do it in clinic. And the second part of that is that I tell all of my patients repeatedly, many times, that surgery is part of their care. It is not a cure. It is a portion and a tool that we use. And their aftercare and their ability to do all the care with us and letting me do the care in clinic is equally as important as the surgery. And they need to understand that. And we need to understand that. And when we train people, they need to understand that. It's not about just getting to cut. I love to cut. I love to, to operate. But it's also about understanding how to do the care afterwards. Uh, I think similar to uh, what Dr. Vaughn said is, um, we have to kind of think when we do sinus surgery, especially, um, you know, all patients are different. Uh, the, the, the routines that we teach our residents of just doing a maxillary entrostomy, ethmoid, whatever, um, it can be the actual surgery that needs to be done for that particular patient depends on what's happening to that particular patient, their anatomy, their disease process, all these different factors. Um, so a lot of thought goes into what surgery I'm going to be doing before the surgery, during the surgery, uh, post-operative care issues after the surgery. And um, it's not an uh, automatic cookie cutter operation, even though it's all called an endoscopic sinus surgery. Um, there's so many decisions that I'm making during my operation to make sure that I have a good long-term outcome. All right, thank you, everybody. Well, this brings us to the end of the course. Uh, the 10th Annual Seattle Otology Advanced Rhinology course is officially over. Thanks for your attention, guys and ladies. And love to see you back. March 2023 will be tentatively our, our next one. So again, safe travels home. If you have any questions, we're going to be hanging out for the next uh, 10 minutes. There's some beverages over here to polish off. And thanks again.